Hey, 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 welcome back to another edition of I Mix What I Like Live. Again, I'm Jared Ball, your host at I Mix What I Like for all your relevant social media. And please make sure you are all signed up at imixwhatilike.org so you don't miss any of the work I or my colleagues and comrades are doing across multimedia uh, beyond this live stream. Please like, share, and subscribe here uh, or at the YouTube channel, that is. Uh, and please also consider joining, hitting the join button and, and becoming a, a, a month, uh, you know, a, a monthly contributor to the channel because starting in February, a lot more is coming beyond just this live stream and we want to continue to expand, uh, and your help would be greatly appreciated, uh, if you can at all support it. So, uh, please do that. Uh, in just a few minutes, we are going to continue our conversation with Rosa Clemente, longtime activist, uh, author, scholar. Uh, and then, as I did not point out in the last uh, conversation, someone uh, reminded us, not only was she uh, you know, a foundational activist in the hip hop activist movement uh, as a hip hop scholar, so to speak, but also in uh, the Malcolm X grassroots movement. And of course, in 2008, she ran with Cynthia McKinney on the Green Party ticket for vice president and president of the United States. Uh, and she's gonna be joined uh, uh, in, well, looks like he just got here. He's gonna be joined, she's gonna be joined as well um, uh, by uh, Brother Kali Akuno whose uh, affiliation, of course, I messed up in the last live stream, uh, uh, could not for some reason pull the memory together. Uh, but he is, among many other things, longtime uh, veteran activist with a number of formations, currently working now with Cooperation Jackson. Uh, and we could talk with him about that as well. Although our primary purpose for this conversation is is this, what, what I'm calling, or we're calling, uh, for the sake of conversation, a new wave of black exploitation, uh, and what I want to ask him about, and what I'm excited to talk with him about, and with Rosa about, is the impact of this popular culture uh, on the work he and she and others are doing to organize uh, there in our community. So, without further ado, let's bring them both up. Uh, and of course, I am talking about Kali Akuno and Rosa Clemente. Welcome to you both, Kali. It is good to see you again, my man. I hope you are uh, well. Thank you for joining me. And it's always good to be joined by the both of you. So welcome. Good to see you both. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Looking good, bro. Oh, man, I'm trying to keep up, man. I'm trying to. I'm looking good. This is the problem. Y'all get more handsome and we get wrinkles. What's happening? I don't like it. Look at y'all. I, 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 I take the wrinkles to be, they have my back fully functioning, uh, Rosa. So I know. Y'all are both married now. And I'm like, yeah, but also, like, if y'all weren't, like, y'all would get dates and I would be like, deuces to the world. <laughs> No, because as my wife will be quick to remind everybody, if it were not for her, if we were not married, I would literally be dead because <laughs> that's actually what the, the doctor said. That's a fact because I was not, I was not uh, listening to my, my pain and was doing that stereotypical manhood thing of not going to the hospital. And the doctor said, he, he said, when, when I finally went in there, he said, do a jumping jack and I couldn't even get off the ground. He said, your appendix are about to burst. And if you don't go straight to the ER, you, you, you're on your way out of here. So your wife saved your life and, and I've never lived it down. So I, I might've gotten a few more dates for a minute, but then I'd be out of here. So it wouldn't be, it'd be all moot. So anyway, um, uh, shout out to, to, uh, Samia. Thank you for becoming a new member and, uh, please encourage other folks to do it. Cause I, I, I promise you, this is, this is, uh, uh, not an individual project. We about to make a big announcement and, and, and expand. So please, you know, please do. Are you going to tell me and Kali about the big experiment before you expand? Yeah, I don't even know. I, I, yeah, I don't know why I haven't, but but and or I I think I probably just assumed you all knew, 
uh, but but we'll 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 definitely rap about it um, ASAP, and and I expect you all will be involved anyway. So yeah. you know, uh, but I am excited about it. So you know, um, Kali, I, I feel like since we haven't talked to you in a minute, man, we should. I, I, you know, I, I I'm excited to get to the triflingness of pop culture with you. But I do feel like I should ask about something more substantive about, you know, Cooperation Jackson or or anything else you you are focused on when we're not, you know, dealing with your back. And we wish you a speedy recovery from that. Uh, having dealt with that a little myself, I know that's not anything sweet, but uh, um, so we can jump into the silliness or relative silliness if you like. But I want to I want to defer to you at least a little bit and give you a chance to, to rap about whatever it is you would like us to know a little bit about uh, uh, before we do get into some of that dumbness? Uh, whew, let me see. Um, <laughs> I saw the conversation you and Rosa had uh, after the 6th, which I I, I, I I hope if people missed it, they go and check it out because uh, as you said, um, I think you put it something like we should all be reacquainting ourselves with the Second Amendment something along those lines. I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. That's a good, that's a good way of putting it. That's a, that's yeah, well, a, well, I'm just, I think I'm just quoting you. So yeah, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, you know, look, we, we are entering into um, a perilous time. Um, uh, you know, uh, and, and I say that mildly, you know, the, the empire is very unstable right now. Um, and it's going to become more unstable. You know, um, Biden can make all kinds of promises. The Democrats can make all kinds of promises. They cannot fulfill them. You know, the, the system just does not have the capacity uh, to make good on the, the different promises, you know, that they want to put forward. And even if they did, they have a robust opposition, you know, which is going to challenge them at every single point along the line. So they're going to have to govern you know, on the basis of, of compromise in a major way. Uh, and they can't serve two masters. They can't serve, you know, the the, uh, the folks who uh, voted them in the office, you know, who need immediate relief, who have high expectations, uh, who want some very tangible things, things that, that um, liberal democracy, you know, was supposed to have delivered decades ago. They're not going to be able to do that. The capitalist system just won't allow uh, that level of, you know, reappropriation of surplus uh, in the midst of a, a depression and declining profits. So they really just blowing a lot of smoke at, at, at folks. And that's just going to aggravate the crisis even more. Uh, and it's going to heighten the tensions even more. Um, so it's, it's going to be an interesting time. You know, I, for me, for one, I'm glad I'm alive to be here, witness it. Uh, I got to get my back right uh, so I can, con you know, contribute and participate more on the level that I want to. Uh, and what I think, you know, the situation is going to require. Uh, but I'm really enjoying, you know, watching all of the um, uh, fractures and the fumbles and the foibles of the empire, you know, uh, and just... I've been feeling like, I don't know if y'all seen that meme where uh, I'm sure y'all have the, the brother who uh, sits back and just starts, you know, uh, eating his popcorn, like watching. Like that's how, that's how I've been the last couple of months. Like, oh, okay, what's the latest crisis? What's the latest, you know, fumble, you know? Um, you, you know, but we, we got to, in order for it to really be more than comedy, uh, we got to get far more organized and quickly because uh, it's not like their disputes, you know, and they're struggling with each other. It would be one thing if it, if we were, uh, could be neutral, if it was just, you know, dealt with themselves and left us alone. That ain't how this game is played. You know, and unfortunately, the, the stakes are often written, you know, on our bodies, you know, uh, and the casualties wind up being, uh, us, or at least the first line of that. So we got some major work to do in a short period of time. And and I think we, you know, the one of our main tasks that I think will bleed into this conversation is trying to struggle with our folks for clarity and, and figuring out who our friends are and who our enemies are mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and not being fooled by false friends. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I, you know, so so my my interest, at least for for us tonight, in 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 uh, bridging these uh, topic areas, is in that, and, and I'll just put it uh, simply that 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 I see, and I haven't seen the the new uh, Hampton movie yet that we were talking about, Rosa, just a little bit last hour, but. Uh, certainly when I looked at one night in Miami and American skin, I felt more, more, you know, uh, or as much as ever the, the, uh, political function of pop culture. And to your point, Kali, I felt that these, these are, uh, attempts at preparing us, um, as best as media can for, uh, uh, how not to respond or, 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 or how to misinterpret the moment and not do the kind of organizing work. Because if, if, yeah. if, if, um, if armed self-defense is depicted as is, is, is the case in American skin, and if Malcolm, if the, if the, if the breadth of black politics from Malcolm X to, to Jim Brown to Muhammad Ali is depicted as is the case in that film, then the, the you know, the, at least, the impact, I, I think, on the on on the audiences, particularly young, uh, uh, you, you know, disorganized audiences, is going to be tremendous, and it's going to be negative. Um, and again, I think that the two streams of, of of thoughts here are connected. That as things get worse and more confusing and more uh, popcorn worthy. Uh, the, on the other hand, th there's an, a, a, an equal assault co uh, cognitively on our ability to interpret it and organize in response. Um, uh, Rosa, I guess, you know, go ahead and, and I'll give you the first chance to respond to that. And Kali, you you know, come on in after that. Or if you have any thoughts about what I've just said, you know. Um, no, I mean, go, go ahead, I, Rosa, take it away. Yeah, no, I agree with you. You know, for me, this process of being a produce associate producer on a film was more connected to Fred Hampton Jr. and his mother and all the um, Black Panther elders, you know, but again, it's a biopic. It's not a documentary. So I think it's critically important that we also begin to look at so many of our brilliant documentarians you know, I think it's important right now that people do go to JerichoMovement.com, understand why Jaleel Muntikin was freed and then not let go and then not got COVID-19 and now at this moment still has an um, a, a band around his knee to uh, his ankle to see what is happening. I think it's important that people understand that soon the other Akole was freed but has not been freed to understand David Gilbert and Leonard Peltier, you know? So I think this is the moment where we're like, okay, we got a little bit of re respite, right? Like here are the Democrats coming in and they're already trying to push out AOC. They're like, oh, she went to a worker strike as opposed to going to the inauguration. Yes. That's exactly what she should have done. Been with the workers at Hunts Point who were asking for a dollar, a dollar an hour pay raise. And they won that victory partly because AOC said, I'm going to be here with you instead of being at this inauguration. So all that being said, I hope that first people understand what Kali, Akuno, Saki Hall, Brandon Keene have been doing in Jackson, Mississippi, but also understanding what Jared Ball and me and other folks are doing within media, you know? And so with all that said, I think it's like the information is out there. Do you want to believe it or don't you want to believe it? And we know what the truth is. And are you ready to organize for that truth? Kali, go ahead. Did you want to... Yeah, I mean, I, I haven't seen American Skin. Let me let me say that off the top, um, and I likely never will. <laughs> um, you know, um, I just wasn't too happy with little I saw of, of uh, the Nat Turner piece uh, that the brother you know put out, and where he was going with that. Um, so, you know, once I got wind of this politically and I looked at, you know, one of the, uh, trailers, I was like, no, uh, um, I, I value my time very preciously. I'm like, that'd be two hours. I could never get back. 
you know, uh, uh, plus, plus whatever anger it would iron my mind. But the movie about Miami, I did get a chance to check that that piece out. It's slick. It's it's a very slick piece. Um, you know, uh, uh, I give Regina credit for uh, trying to put something like that together. I understand it was based on a, a play or something uh, uh, to that effect. Um, you know, it, it was for our, uh, Amazon, you know, movie, whatever. Uh, you know, I thought they did everything. They got the set pieces right. They got the clothes right. They got the cars right. You know, they, they, the hotel. And they got the politics completely wrong. You know, uh, 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 you know, just off the top, just from the beginning uh, and through and through. Um, but, you know, thinking about, I was sitting there thinking about like the, the, the criteria I have now, you know, having children uh, and trying to expose them to the greatest extent possible to, to our people's legacy, to the history. And my thing always going is, is this something I would show my children, mm -hmm. right? Is it clear? on his motives, his aims, and objectives? Is it clear about aspiring not only in, in portraying good moral characters, uh, not only in, in uh, uh, kind of having real rounded people, but is it clear in terms of articulating where they should stand relative to the, to the aspirations of our people for power? And in that regard, the movie just failed, completely failed. Mm -hmm. You know, the only only point in that movie that that even came particularly close and, I, and I'm assuming this is true at the play uh, that the only part that was somewhat you know redeeming was when, when Malcolm says in the movie we are at war but it doesn't articulate what the nature of the war is or who the mm -hmm. war is with and or why and so if you're gonna, gonna go into a narrative such as that you really got to be clear with your audience uh, so there's no misconception, and it did nothing to, to really articulate to you uh, the the at that particular point in time, really what was the nature of Malcolm's development and where was he aspiring to and where was he planning on go going, you know, what Muslim Mosque Incorporated, right? Uh, because that was the first organization that that he created, and then the organization Afro American Unity. So neither one of them were particularly named, even though for those of us who are historians know that at least the first one was already clearly articulated. And the second one was 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 clearly on his mind, but didn't come into full fruition until after he made, you know, that that the that trip that he alluded to, uh, or they alluded to in that movie. Um, you know, and it doesn't it didn't put Malcolm in an international context, which he already was in, in that uh 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 time and in, in, in space. Um, it treated Jim Brown basically like a joke, you know, uh, uh, in any fundamental, you didn't have no real sense of, uh, other than him being a great football player and, and beginning to act in some movies and making some decent change, you know, for it. Didn't know all you, you got from Jim Brown was that he wanted white women and seemed to hate on light skinned brothers for being rav revolutionaries all at the same time. Yeah, like, I was like, how in the hell is this all we were supposed to get from Jim Brown? Exactly. Yeah. Like what? What is? What is? What, I mean, I'm sorry to cut you off, man. My bad. Go ahead, man. No, I was, no, just, I was just so irritated by that. You head in the different places, and then, uh, uh, um, yeah, it was just, it was, it was just bad, man. And then it just, it made uh, um, Muhammad Ali look like a young fool, you know, uh, uh, who couldn't think for himself. Uh, wasn't quite clear what what he wanted to do. Uh, when anybody knows, I mean, everybody's confused on a certain level about many different things when you're 22 years old. Uh, but to be as driven as he was, with the clear level of his experience growing up in in, in Louisville, Kentucky, and what he had already went through with the Olympics, right, and that whole piece of throwing the medal away, that had already all happened by that point in time. This Not according to that movie. Crazy. Right, this is somebody who was very clear, right? Who wasn't teetering on the fence. Uh, um, so you just you just miss all that. Now, granted, you can say, okay, could they put all that in the movie of, of two hours? Probably not, but you got to make some clear choices on where you want to go. So 
to me, like uh, uh, if your point was to show um, four black men having a tough conversation, you didn't pick, have to pick that one. Because I'm not even it's, clear what was what was what was a tough point other than you know you need to make some sharper political uh, uh, focus records more like Bob Dylan like that was the that was the strongest message that wind up coming out of the movie at the end of the day. And that part, and that part, I do know at least I, I at least know was was factually correct that that Sam Cooke felt a certain way about Bob Dylan seemingly doing more politically with his music than he was. It, that 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 did that part was so so just so folks if, if anybody's interested uh 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 i did a whole you know video on these movies and why the you know i tried to apply the vernon philosophy of black media avoidance to them uh uh you know but what i'll say now for now is is that just so i don't repeat all of that and take up too much of this conversation is that that um uh, uh, to your point about parenthood, Kylie, I've said that that American skin film is the last one of its genre I'm going to see. Yeah, I'm with uh, you. I'm even, even for the point of analysis or classrooms, and none of those excuses, no more. I can't go through that stress anymore. That I was, I, I, It's too much. To, to And then to the point that you make about Nat Turner, it's the, he does the same thing, that you get dragged through the emotional pain of of black trauma and then the the part where at least where you might expect some sort of payoff with the retribution never comes so mm -hmm. and it, with american skin there's no no cops get suffer anything and then he literally gets his head blown off on, as, at, at the at the end of the movie so on top of all of that you don't get any of the of the 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 promised militancy uh, from either film, all you get is black pain and suffering and trauma, man. I was so traumatized by that movie. I was like, I'm not doing this again. I'm not doing it again. Um, so, so, so congratulations to Hollywood and them. They got my last six or seven dollars on this one, whatever it costs to rent that joint. But I'm not doing that again. Uh, um, uh, you know what? Then, yeah, go ahead, Rosa. Yeah. No, I just want to say something to that because I did watch it and I, I, I always tell my husband, like, he'll be like, come watch this. I'm like, I'm not interested in like black porn and black trauma. Like I'm not anymore. Um, but growing up, my dad always played Nat King Cole. And I had a conversation with him one day, my dad. And he goes, you know, he was the only black person that I felt spoke to me. Okay. So we're talking about Nat King Cole. And then I see these movies about, um, and then I, th and this last um, Sunday, the day before, uh, obviously the day before yesterday, there was a, a New York Times magazine. It's a, about 50 pages long if you have to print it out. And I did print it out where this author is saying like, I'm tired of black death. I want black joy. And he breaks down all these differing Black joy, um, artistic, educational, co community, cooperative movements that are happening. And I printed it out because I was like, right. Because I've seen from when I was in college in the 90s to right now, Boys in the Hood, Menace to Society. You know, I could go on and on where you see Black death as opposed to like black joy, you know? So first it, that black joy exists. And second, that just because there are black people or Latino people making it doesn't make it something that we should in view in our memory, you know? And like Kali and, and like you, Jared, we all have children and we're like, Okay, you're doing this TikTok video, but let me show you this. Or you're doing this, but let me show you this. Because I think that we have become so accustomed to Black death that we just see it as a norm. Where we should be like, no, this is not the norm. And this is not what I want to pass down to my children. You know, so in being part of this, I was just like, I really, it took a lot for me to see American skin first because of the black death, but also because there's been women 
who have come out and said that Nate Parker, the director, sexually abused and assaulted them. You know, so I watched it because I wanted to be prepared for this, but I also was like, fuck, I, oh, sorry. I can say it on it. Yeah, I mean. Because <laughs> <laughs> you don't know, my, my, I, have a, I have a curse now. Um, I was like, yeah, this is not good. I don't even want to watch it because he's associated with it. But then the flip side of it is also because now I've been in this process of seeing something flourish where I know and also – the son of Fred Hampton and the comrade of Fred Hampton and the Black Panther Party members, elders, and Black Party um, Panther Cubs are going to be like, yo, that is not a good representation of us. But I think that um, Fred being involved um, made a difference. But I also, I'm like, I feel what everybody's saying. Like, yo, this is too much death. Like, how much can we begin to look at ourselves just being killed by not only our own people, but white supremacy But before, like, we have a lot of history before all of that. You know what? Uh, uh, you know, I appreciate the super chat and the question. And honestly, you, you know, before you raised that question, I, I did not put those film, that film in the same category. I don't know if this is just a blatant contradiction or I'm tr trying to trick myself to rationalize seeing, to, to see the Fred Hampton film. But initially in my mind, I wasn't putting them in the same category and maybe that's incorrect. Uh, um, but uh, so I'll have to rethink that. That's a, that's a legit question. Um, but uh, I, I am going to see the Hampton film, so I guess I am contradicting myself if they are in the same category. But initially, I, I, I meant them, I don't see ahead. them in the same. I don't see them in the same category. Again, now, granted, I haven't seen this other film, and I probably will not. But the, the, you will. I need the link next week. You will be seeing that. No, I'm, I'm well, I think he's talking about American film. Skin. Oh, yeah, I'm oh, talking right. about American Skin. Yeah, no, I, I'm gonna watch the Fred Hampton movie. Um, and what little. I've seen there's just like previews and things of that nature. I think I'm gonna encourage other folks to see it because because the piece that that, that I think is important uh, is really trying to depict the role of Judas in this particular piece, right? And the internal contradictions that are at play amongst our people, which are as true now as they were then. And what are the lessons that could be drawn from that, right? Uh, and I know they can't tell the whole story you know, uh, uh, of what happened, but uh, how how that brother led a tragic life wind up at, at the end of the day committing suicide for the role that he wound up playing uh, uh, in the, you know, the, the assassination of uh, Fred Hampton and Mark Clark. You know, so how do we wind up educating our folks about uh, the role of the state, you know, the role of opportunists, uh, uh, because he just, you know, he was like, look, if y'all going to let me get out of jail for a minute, I'll do what you want me to do. It, you know, if it's going to help me get out of here, but then wind up having to deal with the tension as he started to realize, like, you know, I actually agree with some of this, you know, but, but in order for me to play this role, they got this rope around my neck that I got to report. And I got to give this information. So what's the role of the state, right? Uh, uh, what's what's the role of our internal weaknesses? All, all these different questions that come up. That one, I think you could raise some serious questions about organizing in the here and now that are drawn from concrete experience. Uh, so I, I put that in a different category uh, um, because it's, it's based on reality, things that you can go back, you can check. There's still people alive to this day who you can get references from, who you can get direct opinions You know, uh, uh, as to what happened or how was this depicted. Um, the the more fictional things I think to me are problematic if they are not clearly articulating a vision or at least a pathway forward for us to achieve liberation. That's See, but that's why I hear you. I, and I but that's I, actually I, I don't I don't know. I, first of all, I never think that that happens. Like like these films come out and it, it never leads to some massive revival of of uh, uh, you know a, a study or appreciation for the histories and the politics of the peoples involved. People don't go and research. You know that's I, it, that's always the hope. But I don't think that that's what happens. Um, and then I don't know if if if. 
Yeah. Anyway, so I I, I don't know. I, I just I, I so so I don't hold up much hope out for that. And and um, but it could. And it, let me let me let me just say something. They, they interrupt you just real quick. I'm sure. Sorry. Go ahead. No, it's cool. Because it could. So um, let's let's bring up uh, some tools and things that happened in our past that I think that we could draw upon. So uh, for everybody who's out there listening, there was a formation that our people had, the African Liberation Support Committee, right, which came together in the early 1970s. And uh, it, it was put in part to do explicitly what, is, what its name implied, have our people, primarily the United States, but throughout the Western Hemisphere, come up with political and material support for the African liberation movements in Guinea, uh, um, Angola, Mozambique, uh, uh, in particular. Um, and one of the, the, the critical things that wind up happening, there was a, there was a documentary film that wind up being, uh, uh, produced that they would show, right? It's about an hour long. I think you can even find it on, uh, um, uh, YouTube now. I think I saw a copy if they haven't taken it down. Which is still worth going going to see. Uh, Aluta Continua is the name of the movie, mm -hmm. and what the the support committee did very well in in the nineteen you know nineteen uh, seventies uh, to drum up support. They had a curriculum, right? That that, that they had accompanying this piece. They would take it and show it in, in uh, community venues all around the country. You know, I saw this movie several times when I was a kid. They have the discussion groups. So we can make, and this was made by by somebody who from from our movement who went, you know, went to Africa, made the film, went through all these trouble to get it, brought it back, put it in the hands of the movement, and then went around and and organized these things. So it shows number one that we what we can do independently, b what we can do when, when we're tied and associated with with movements, and how we can use our creative genius to actually build movement. That's not what Hollywood is going to do. That's my point. But see, that, so, but, but that's my do. point. So, but, okay, but that's my right. point. So I'm not saying because my point is that media connected to organized effort can, of course, produce positive results. But that's not what we're dealing with. We're talking about an imposed product on a disorganized community. So, I so, agree so, right. so people are not going to be watching this Hampton movie with a curriculum. And uh, you know, connected to organized discussion, they're not going to be watching it. They're going to watch for the same. They're going to be like, "Oh, I heard the name. It's the hot new thing. It's promoted on Netflix. Is you know, it's got some people I know are in it. You know, uh, and then they're going to watch a movie now. And then, go let, ahead, me say, mm -hmm. let me say this: We actually do have a curriculum for the mm -hmm. the movie um, that's being uh, spearheaded by Pastor Michael McBride and Faith and Justice, where he, a uh, Pastor McBride is somebody that most people would know if it, they see him. He was one of the first frontline pastors at Ferguson. And, um, he has helped Ryan Coogler and Ryan Coogler's all his movie, including, uh, Fruitvale Station to Black um, uh, to the Oscar Grant fruit. Um, I'm sorry. Um, Oscar Grant story to this. And, um, I actually spoke to him last week and there's a bunch of us that are putting together a curriculum from this movie. So I, I think you're right in that sense, right? Like, how do you see this movie? And then how you talk about this movie for me, how I can do it more concretely and bring it home where I am in Albany, New York is like, okay, I'm an associate producer, but I'm also helping with the curriculum. And now I teamed up with an organization here in Albany that's going to rent out the movie theater, socially distanced so everybody could see the movie, but also that these young people will be able to critique. Yeah. And yeah, and because my daughter uh, and Jared, like one of your daughters, is at this 15, 16 age, you know, she's super skeptical. She's like, yeah, and what? It's Warner Brothers. Like, what are they going to talk about? And I'm like, okay, you know, what should we be talking about? And that's the thing. I think part of it is also us as educators and community people being like, let's watch these movies that may bring something to it. Now, I know I'm biased. I would say that the movie Judas and the Black Messiah are going to bring way more to what we think about 
how do we fight against a system that American skin or one night in Miami may bring? I could be totally wrong. I totally accept that, you know, but I also feel it's my duty to also be like, let me show this to young people and then y'all break it down. Tell me where I'm wrong. And if there's no historical context, my job as someone in Africana and Black Studies is to bring that historical context. All right, thanks. Uh, uh, somebody asked the name documentary Ali was talking about. Uh, he sent the link uh, to the YouTube of it. And I just put it in the chat because um, I think uh, guests can only send stuff to the private chat for some reason. They don't let you chat to the to the community for, I don't know why the platform does that, but anyway. So uh, I checked that as well. Look, I, I, again, uh, you know, I hope, look, I hope I'm, I always hope I'm wrong. And I hope, I hope that the, the film does more to inspire people than, than I think it will. Um, I just keep thinking back, you know, whether it was, you know, Malcolm X when we were younger, uh, you know, or even, you know, Battle of Algiers more it was was a popular, you know, or or Quilombo for some of us was a popular. I mean, there there these movies are out there, but but like uh uh but but the 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 impact they have, I don't I don't think is, is I, the act is well for for us speak personally, these these films have had a more more of an impact on me post becoming more involved politically. Uh, as a young adult uh, than I think they would have if I had not. So I do hope people um, see them in collectives and part of organizations and discuss it. But uh, um, I think the, I think the yeah. corrective, Jared, I would ask is, is that these things are, are, I think in my view, my limited experience in trying to, you know, produce some things like this. They they work most effectively when the project, like the film project, the educational project, all those different things happen from the beginning, and are tuned in from the beginning. Because oftentimes, what what will happen is, you know, the, the the creators, the 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 movie makers, the actors, you know, they just making a movie, and then there's some activists who think about, well, I can make a tool or curriculum kind of after the fact. Right. And, and unless you think about these things, I would argue in connection going forward together from the beginning. Right. Then it, the, then the curriculum won't have an impact on the, the, the thinking and design of the curriculum won't have an actual impact on the script. Right. And those two things need to go kind of like hand in hand. And that why it might make something like mo more mechanical to a certain degree, I, I think in the long term, it'll have a much greater impact for what you want to do. And what we needed to accomplish, right? Um, so I think you know, for, I'm putting this out there because hopefully there's somebody who's listening, who's, who's who's interested in, you know, as a culture producer, producing music, producing videos, making a movie, to to lay that seed, plant that seed, or think of these things as an integrated whole, and bring in the people that you need to bring in from the beginning, so that the finished product is, has has an actual movement orientation to it. And think about like how you're going to distribute it and other you know things of uh, uh, of that nature, you know, so it could have the maximum impact that I think we wanted to have. Well, if people yeah. aren't going to fully yeah. join, go ahead, Jack, go ahead. Can I say this real quick, mm -hmm. um, just to give people a more expansive view. So, three years ago this week, this brother Shaka Keen hit me up and was like, "Hey." And the way we were connected was through this organization, <laughs> collective called Blackout for Human Rights that Ryan Coogler and um, Ava DuVernay started around bringing in activists and organizers into this cultural space. And one of the biggest things we've done, which we couldn't do this year, it was to do an MLK Day at Riverside Church for the last five years, completely packed and all in all this glorious sense and beauty and celebrating Dr. King at Riverside Church where he came, probably his um, greatest um, speech around imperialism, militarism and capitalism ever. So, the thing is that the first meeting that we had in Chicago was at the home of Fred Hampton Sr. that his um, comrade, Akua and Jerry, and his son, Fred Hampton Jr. And it was intense, right? And we brought everybody together 
And I think part of we is being me like, hey, I know Fred, let's go have this meeting. Let's go to Chicago. And when we were sitting there and talking for hours and Ryan was there and um, Shaka Keen, um, who wrote and directed it, his partner was in, at, in the room. I brought Justice, my husband, with me. And at one moment, Fred looked at Ryan Kugel and was like, yo, didn't we meet before? And Ryan Kugel was a yes at that fruit market in Oakland. And they realized that they hadn't met each other before. And the one thing I left with that meeting is that Fred Hampton was like, this is how I'm rolling, which means I'm probably gonna critique it all the way to the end of the movie comes out where Ryan was like, and I expect you to do that. So it's been a three year process where Fred has been involved, his mother Akula and Jerry has been involved in Black Panthers where there's been a lot of um, back and forth, like, eh, you know, it's a biopic and all that. And what I kept saying to Fred was like, listen, like it's a biopic, it's not a documentary, right? So our job as organizers is to use this as a force, but we also know that the critique is gonna come and it should come. And Fred was literally like, the critique is going to come and it should come. And he had talked about how so many other directors have wanted to make this movie, but he only felt comfortable in moving forward because Ryan Coogler um, gave him that comfort. All that being said, I'm like, yes, everything should be critiqued. I'm like, I'm a social critic. We should all critique it. Um, and then part of my emotional self is also like I had um, talked to Jared early in this when we were doing our segment was like, man, I can show my dad the Young Lords through a film. Now, I want all the critique. I want all the like this is shit and who he was and all of that. But I think people are going to be surprised to understand that, you know, Fred even on the set was critiquing it every day. Like it wasn't that Fred Hampton was on the set not being like, yo, not that, do this, do that. And also knowing the limitations of Hollywood. That's what it comes down to me. And I think that's something we have to get to people across. The only time you're going to see a movie or TV show, it's not going to be correctly depicted towards your freedom struggle. But how do we use it? But how do we also critique it? And I, and I, I, I really truly feel that Fred Hampton Jr. and Ryan Coogler are in that space of like, it's good, but how do we use it? But how do we critique it ourselves? I think that's important. Kali, as we sort of start to have to head towards a close here, I want to, you know, I want to come back to that question I, I started to try to, or I tried to start with at the beginning of this hour, which was, um, you know, given the work you're doing with Cooperation Jackson and the work you've been doing for a long time, um, if, if to the extent that if, if you would just work, you know, walk with me for a second, to the extent that I might be right that these media products are here to discourage or or disillusion or create confusion around the kinds of, of work and, and effort you've been involved in. Uh, what are the issues that we're being, or do you think we're being encouraged not to focus on that, that you and your, your comrades are, are dealing with on a daily basis or that you would like to see more of us get involved with? Um, because again, I think that these these Man, these how, films. How much, are, yeah, anyway, go ahead. Time we got. As much time as you could put got. to the question, really. I, I you know I just you know I just see us coming up towards an hour, so I just you know I, that's just a marker. But as much time as you want to put on it. I mean, there's 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 I haven't seen anything in quite some time that actually deals with the process of organizing, and there's different methodologies to do that. But I haven't seen nothing that really touches on that. Right, uh, uh, things that touch on some of the outcomes of organizing, but not the challenges and difficulties that that it actually takes. You know, the time, the 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 perseverance, the dedication it takes. I think in a period like this, that's deeply important because there's there's so much focus in on uh, kind of immediate gain, and 
that's not how organizing works and it's not how you build the, the sustainable institutions that in the long term that we're going to need to build and try, you know, create a new society. So something of that vein, uh, I think for all the creatives out there, something that really touches on that. So like, if, for instance, uh, since we talked, you know, part of this thing was talking about Malcolm, you know, if, uh, of all the documentaries of stuff, and I've seen some good ones, the ones that were real important to me, you know, the, the main weakness of all them, they don't focus on Malcolm as an organizer. So what you left with is Malcolm the Great Orator, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Malcolm the Great Nemesis, not the person who built the Muhammad Speaks newspaper, not the person who organized, you know, close to a, 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 a hundred uh, uh, temples slash mosques. Right, uh, uh, who was on the road doing the one-on-one -on -one meetings, right, uh, uh, doing the education work, hitting all the bars in the corners and everything that he needed to do, right, doing the military training, to, you know, helping to train the F uh, the FOI, like that's never touched. Right. But if you want to understand who he was and how the organization that he joined went from being a small sect to a national powerhouse. It's not just him alone, but he played a very important role with his organizing capacity and genius that I would argue actually surpassed his oratory genius. But that ain't what we typically focus on when, when, when we look at Malcolm or on, on these, any, all these other things, right? Um, and that is, I think, a critical piece of what's missing in a lot of these tales and a lot of these stories. So that would be one. Uh, two... We need some good pieces that, that really focus in on uh, economics, mm -hmm. right? And, and um, what it is <clears throat> and what it is and what it is to struggle to do collective and cooperative economics, right? With an orientation towards building, uh, I would argue, eco-socialist economy and all the contradictions, you know, trying to build that within the framework of a capitalist economy uh, uh, that would be kind of one hell of an illustrative story. And it could be told uh, using the examples from, from our peoples, you know, uh, in history, uh, that if you don't, you know, I would be hard pressed to find one currently that I would, you know, want to focus on. But, you know, there's there's some, some uh, uh, rich history coming out of uh, the Federation of Southern Cooperatives or, or many of the other cooperatives that existed, you know, that our people had organized prior to the 1930s, right? Um, you know, that would be one hell of a, a, a movie. Then I want to see somebody pick up on on the the actual examples of our peoples engaging in large scale resistance and in large scale uh, maroonage. And we have plenty of history of, of examples of that. Uh, if you want to look in the African continent for all the, the national liberation movements of the 20th century, you got plenty of, of, of history of, of successful uh, 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 rebellions of our folks, you know, going back to the Haitian Revolution, which is probably the most noted, but there's plenty of others that ain't the only one. Um, I'd like to see that movie that that uh, Danny Glover and them was trying to do about ah, the Haitian Revolution yes. uh, uh, get completed. But like I said, there's no there's no white hero, and so it's not going to get made. And no and no, <laughs> and, and no no funding for it, right? Uh, uh, particularly with, with, I guess, Venezuela kind of being out of the, the, mm. the context of it uh, uh, with, with their own uh, financials, you know, uh, uh, troubles right now with, with uh, the blockades and, and um, you know, the starvation program that imperialism has basically put on, on the country and on the movement. But, you know, look, we ain't, we ain't short of things to talk about. I think it's the focus. Uh, and to me, I, I don't, Black Pain in the context of trying to strive for revolution, I think is critical to show because you know we're not going to make the leaps we make we we need to make without a certain amount of sacrifice, right? So uh, uh, if I saw a movie uh, um, that displayed you know what it really took, not some fictional account of the Haitian Revolution, you know, but the actual you know ten to one ratio that was often uh, uh, exhibited in those battles to at least show the, the level of determination and organization that people had to have, recognizing that the French are going to outgun us, the British are going to outgun us, the Americans are going to outgun us, the Spanish are going to outgun us, because that's what happened, right? Let, let's be clear. They fought all four and had to come up with strategies and tactics to defeat all four. 
And there was a great deal of sacrifice that wound up happening. Roughly, was I think at the, at the uh, 1804, something like half of the population had been decimated, mm -hmm. right? But what level of uh, that, I think, when the people come to a point where they agree collectively that this is what it takes to, to remove these bastards, you know, from, from controlling of our lives, you know, then you can put that in a different framework. And I'm not trying to put it in no romantic sense or say that that's crazy, because if you think it's crazy, then you don't understand the heroism, for example, the Algerian people or the heroism of the Vietnamese, you know, uh, which is a struggle that gets downplayed uh, for not only defeating the French, but then defeating the Americans. And what was the cost? Right. Yeah. There was some serious human toll. But if you look at some of the, the films of the, the, the enemies, like there's a good one. Uh, from my perspective, you know, so from from uh, the enemy's perspective, the, the movie called The Fog of War by McNamara, oh, yeah, right? Yeah. Where so yeah. there's a key thing in there where McNamara is talking about he went and talked to uh, General Jop and was like, look, at the end of the day, y'all had what what uh, uh, all you got was what America could have given you. He said, man, you don't under, you didn't understand this still to this day in your old age. You still ain't talking about what you're going to give me. And, you know, uh, 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 it's like, like, like I'm your dog as opposed to what I'm gonna assert for myself and my uh, my people's you know self dignity and liberation, like you know he I think I hope he was kind of getting it at the end, but it it shows you the level of of you know just the willing the, the the sacrifice that the people collectively determined that they was going to to get to to get that that oppressive you know imperialist beast off their backs. So it has been done in history before, but I, I think if we don't step up to tell those type of stories. Then you know the, the, our imagination is always limited to some of our folks rise up and they get put down. You so know? this, and, and this, do. the the point you're raising there, Kali, it goes to 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 this question here, and actually goes to the point of the project we're trying to build here, and why, even though I haven't announced it yet, I am encouraging people to please sign up and join this channel. Uh, so one. Uh, when Ricky asks here the difference between the Black Arts Movement and the Black Creatives era now, my quick answer would be that the Black Arts Movement was was coming out of an era of, of more organization, mass movement, was more clearly coming out of organized spaces with a clear political agenda, whereas Black Creatives today are operating in an encouraged environment of isolation and individuality and event and, and spectacle. And also, uh, and also yeah. the ex what I, I view between Black Arts Movement and Black Creatives is that Black Creatives right now is a brand. It's mm -hmm. also like, let's have white people like us. Let's have white people give us awards. Let's have white people give us money. Let's have white people give us a cover on a magazine like Vogue or um, Mademoiselle or Marie Claire that didn't even like black people. Like, you know, the person Anna Wintour and her racism within black Vogue, you just need to see the documentary on the brother that's been with her for 50 years who was like, yeah, she's a racist, right? Like, I, and, and it brings me like, yeah, it's, it's like, we're at a space right now where black visibility and black representation really means white acceptance. Like who cares? Oh wait, y'all care because you get the award, that little crystal statue, that little frame on your wall that you could be like, Oh, now, you know, Mademoiselle thinks you're an amazing black leader or a black Latina leader or whatever that means. In thinking about all of this, I think all of it should be critiqued. All of it has to be critiqued. And then all of it has to like, read this book. <laughs> or the poster behind my homie, um, Dr. Ball and my comrade <laughs> and homie, both of y'all who are not good at um, publicity, but I would be your best publicist and being like, no, read the work of Dr. Jared Ball. Read the work of Kali Akuno, Saki Hall, Malcolm S. Grassman's woman, Brandon King. Read the works, like digging deep. Like you can't just be on this on a surface level because right now this system is globally pandemically killing us, but the inequity 
And also beginning to realize that a lot of us have not paid attention to economics. What does it mean to buy into a capitalist system? But what does it mean to talk about Malcolm X in a socialist system? What, what Kali just dropped on us as him as an organizer. Like people like the shiny stuff, but digging deep to that stuff behind the shiny stuff. I think that's what people need to do. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, listen, uh, um, Kali, Rosa, any, any concluding thoughts, anything we didn't cover that you want to make sure we, we, we put some words on at least a little bit, uh, you know, look, obviously this isn't the last time we'll all be convening. And when the film comes out, we'll have to do it again. Um, maybe we have to do something crazy, like have a, have a uh, do a watch party. I haven't I'm tried not, that yet. Doing a watch not, party. Are you? All of y'all together. Yes. I'm yeah, let's do that. I haven't tried that yet. Tomorrow. Because <laughs> I'm about I'm about to do a watch party. There's a lot of watch parties happening. And yes, we need to watch it together and we need to be in community together in a in a space right now where we're not being able to be together human to human. And uh uh Kali, I don't know the situation in in, in in detail, but 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 I say this when anybody else did back problems, I always like to remind people uh a relatively in, inexpensive and an un in, in, in invasive or uninvasive uh thing is that inversion table. I can't I can donate one to me, please. Uh, uh, but I need another one. Well, straight up. Well, let's let's talk, man. I, I'll put something on that cash app for that. I got, you know, I, I have no problem with that. The inversion table that I got has been a huge for me. Uh, so, and and what I will say also, all the all the the, the donations we get during this hour, uh, we'll we'll kick over to Kali for his back, um, and uh, uh, and encourage you know people to 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 continue to to uh, support the channel because. Um, a lot coming. By the way, the, the one point I wanted to make, Kylie, that that to that project that I want, why I want people to consider supporting what we're going to do here is because a couple of years ago, someone contacted us and said that they were going to uh, hire me to embed with Cooperation Jackson for some journalism thing, and it never happened. And for years, I've I've. You hated that it never happened and that we were beholden to someone else coming through on their promise. And I think this is the kind of work that we should be doing where we have embedded journalists, for lack of a better phrase, with the people doing the kind of work that no one else is covering in ways that no one else is covering it. And that's the kind of stuff that I know we're going to be trying to do here. So anyway, just something, you know. Look, Kali Akuno, Rosa Clemente, thank you both for joining us. The, the, the chat, the comment section was live. It's dope as always. Everybody uh, uh, check out the, the film. Rosa is an associate producer of Judas and the Black Messiah. Definitely read Jackson Rising. Uh, and uh, and stay tuned. We'll be having more with these two and, and many, many other sessions uh, uh, in the not too distant future. But thanks again, Kali and Rosa. Appreciate you both very much. And thank you, Jared, because yeah. you're not a good publicist for yourself. Let me just say, okay, Dr. Jared Ball, I call him <laughs> doctor because that's how he should be known. We went to Cornell at different times, but our comradeship is so deep and intense as well as Kali that I just want to big both these brothers up for being like, super forward thinking visionaries being able to call at midnight. Like I hate it all. <laughs> I don't want to do shit anymore. And I think it's important because we're in a time period right now where there's a lot of things happening, particularly around people who identify as men. And I'm like, not only do I love my husband and my dad, these are my comrades. These are brothers who are visionary and have uplifted women and other people at the same time. And, you know, I could have been a publicist and gotten paid a lot more, but these are my comrades. So everybody go check out their work and, you know, yo, we got to support each other right now. Like we trying to get free, like we're going to die trying to get free. That's at the end of the day. And we all have children that we also want to have a better life. So, you know, everybody listening right now, check out their work, their websites and all of it. And know that there are strong black women behind both of these brothers.
Indeed. I ain't, I ain't I, behind. <laughs> <laughs> you about, about to give me whooped. Yeah, Joe is playing PlayStation right now with his headphones that he's discovered. He can actually talk to people that are playing PlayStation at the first time, so he's already in his room. But we love all the brothers. We love y'all. Yes, I do have a cash app. Look, look, I'm, let me, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to put that all up because I'm because what we collect, we're going to send to Kali uh, um, to, for his back. So, so I'm going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to say goodbye to our guests for now. Let them go. And then I'll take care of that. But so thank you both very much. Uh, and we'll, anytime, man, more soon. Peace to both of you. Right. Uh, uh, and thank you for, for, for joining me. Uh, and to the rest of you, you know what, let me, um, I'll look it up here, but look, first of all, thanks for joining us. I really appreciate it. And, um, uh, uh, the chat was live. I'm going to have to go back and check out some of this stuff um, later because I know I missed some of it, but I'll put my cash app up and anything that we get related to this video, uh, we're going to send to Kali because what he will not say, uh, I think that's it there. Uh, what he will not say is, um, you know, how much work that he does and has been doing for, for people for a long time. Um, and uh whoops whoops that's not it uh and not everybody is uh making a lot of money for it so anyway that's my cash app if you send me something i will forward it over to to kali akuno to help him get an inversion table i think that's a dope uh uh, uh thing to do for this for this um yeah absolutely and uh, again, uh, thanks everybody for joining me for this hour, for these couple of hours and for, for rocking with the channel and please continue to do so um, and stay tuned. By the way, uh, the, the setup looks maybe a little bit different because my laptop is um, getting repaired. So I'm on a backup device. Uh, I hope that's not been too much of a problem. And uh, uh, which is, but it's also why I've, I've been a little bit slow scheduling some of the next uh, uh, visits. So in the next uh, session, so uh, there might be a, a slight slowdown this week, but we have many more scheduled or being scheduled. So we'll be back up soon, you know, sooner than later if we miss anything. So please go to our mix what I like dot org. Please go to the YouTube channel, like, share, subscribe, all of that. Check up on the videos you might have missed in the interim. Uh, although we'll be back pretty soon. I just, I don't know exactly when, but we got a, a, a backlog of, of folks lining up to, to join us. We just haven't gotten everything set yet. And this laptop issue kind of threw a little hiccup, but we're endeavoring to, ever, endeavoring to deal with that. So absolutely, as Fred Hampton used to say to you, we, to you, we say peace if you're willing to fight for it. Like Garvey said, we'll catch you in the whirlwind. So peace, catch you in the whirlwind. See you next time right here on I Mix What I Like live. Thanks again to everybody and the guests. Peace, everybody. If you want to fight, we'll catch you next time. I mix what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like. I mix what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like.